this video we continue making the milling machine lamp and we start by making a lock nut that holds the two sections together. So let's go into the workshop and see how we do it. Just use the file to take off the edges. It's just taking the sharp edges off each side that the knurling tool threw up. I should be able to come in here. Just turn the part round. I can use the parting off tool just to go along the face. Run the tap through. Take out any bits. People paying attention would have noticed that I didn't put the thread in before I parted it off. The way I did that, I just held it in the vise in the lead jaws and put the tap in. This is the nut we've just made. That goes onto the thread. Then this part will screw onto there. Then the nut will lock it up lock the lamp in position. So the next thing I need to do is finish off drilling the 5mm hole. I need to continue that hole just till it touches the inside of that spherical so I know when I cut through the spherical that will break into the hole. So we need to go down the full depth of that drill and all I'll do is put this in the chuck, grip it on the flat move it forward and hold it. Put the five mil drill in tail stock. So that drill will go straight in. It's gone to there, just into the spherical. 
So when a machine is spherical, the hole will come into the spherical. rod that's in the chuck is a 5mm rod, it's a 20mm diameter so that's how I'm centering the chuck. So what I'm doing now is machining the last two sphericals this flat face making the diameter here so that that's very cool we'll go into that by cutting this diameter and then cutting the groove all the way around so the cables can go around now I've located it in the chuck I'm holding it on a five millimeter cap head and to stop it spinning it's just resting up against the chuck jaw so any movement the chuck jaw will stop it spinning and I just want to go in with this tool to that depth and then bring the tool towards me so that it cuts the diameter see now it's machining this diameter here and just under the cap head here Can do you can see that the tool has got an angle on it so I can now wind it in reset it so it's so the cutting face is square You can see I've machined this face there, so the diameter is just over 20mm from that face to the back of the spherical. And I've also machined the face of the spherical, so I know this is true to the diameter. And that's to allow the other half of the spherical to go in there. The hole should line up and it gives a nice seal around this edge. So what I need to do on this part is put the counter bore in there so the cables can run round each side. And the way I do that, I have this tool which has got a radius formed on the end so that will go into the face and cut the channel. This is just held in the chuck, 5mm cap head Slacken the jaws, just push that back into the jaws so it's located. Okay, that 
should do it. Let's take this off. And all I need to do on this now is go down with the 5mm drill so it just comes out on the inside there so the wires can pass through and round and then machine the centrepiece down to remove some of that bulk. <laughs> change the tool for the form tool see there it's broke into the hole so the wires can come through just want the sharp edge taking off that one's finished just line this up now and the next thing I'm doing it's just taking out this piece in the middle so the cables can come straight through. That's relieved the hole. Just so the screw has a flat surface to come into contact with. Now this is virtually finished except for putting two flats on the thread. Okay, let me just recap where we've got to so far. I've machined the spherticals, machined the inside, and what I've just done is put two flats on the, the thread and put the nut on. tied it up. And the same on the steel part. I filed the thread flats and just put the nut on, bolted it up. So those two are fitted on there. Then this will fit onto this one. So the screw so here. This one will go on here. This is bolt this part's bolted onto the machine and the switch goes on here. So whenever I set that, it'll stay there now because it's solid joints and not a flexible. The next job then is to rewire the switch, put the wire through. Well give it a good clean first, take the swarfing bits out, rewire the switch, and then we'll fit it back onto the machine. Now I've just started to thread the cable into the part and this is the type of cable I'm using. It's, it came off the milling machine, it just got two, two wires inside with a cover. Um, I can fit this through the holes without having to take the cover off so it's a bit more insulation. Uh, what I'm doing, when I put the cap heads through, I'm just putting a small section or shrink tubing over the thread so the threads are not going to dig into the cable and also before I've put the cable through I've taken a scraper and gone around the edges to take off any sharp edges in the back of the hole there to take out the edge, the sharp edge so there's no sharp edges for the cable to rub on and then I'm just putting the cable round thread it through the other end pull it so the two faces can come together you can see that will just fit over there and then the last thing to do Put the cap head through. Sleeve. Make sure the cap
cables at the back. Just screw that in. Just check that it's not trapped between anything. And then just tighten the bed down. That's both ends in. On this end I fitted a switch, wired it up and fitted a bulb holder so the bulb goes in there and then the top goes on. So all I need to do on the other end I've put a little connector block. They were crimped cables with just a bit of plastic over them so I've replaced that with a connector block connect that to the machine and bolt this back on the machine and then we'll test it. Well I've fitted the lamp now to the machine and see here's the here's the fitting and the pieces that are made so if I switch this one on you see the light is closer to the spindle it's, it's, all, it's where you need it where the work's going to be doesn't move, it's solid. I can adjust it by slackening the screws in and out, or up and down. When I adjust it, it stays there. Just tapping it, it won't move. This flexible pipe does tend to move. So I think that's another job done. It's a lot more compact. Before this, uh, the lampshade was actually touching the table. So now it's the light where you need it. Well, that's it for today. I hope that was useful. hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next time on Enos Engineering.